So much opportunity lies just a few years away. Hey guys, MasterCoX here. Now as we all know, Dragon Ball Super is intending to fill in the 10 year gap that there was between the Margin Buu saga ending and the Peaceful World saga beginning right at the end of Dragon Ball Z. These 10 years had so much potential in terms of storytelling that it was just waiting to be exploited in some shape or form, be it in a movie or a TV special or just through some kind of supplemental manga that Toriyama could have actually just churned out in a weekend. As well as properly establishing Pan and Bra in the story instead of just having them show up. Although admittedly, Pan's introduction at the end of Z was pretty cool, you know, just flying in randomly from around the world as if it were nothing. That was pretty neat to be fair. Well, she just casually flew around the planet in record time. No biggie. As you're watching this video, I am currently staving off jet lag whilst being in Hartford, Connecticut for Kineticon for the very first time. I've been wanting to go to this convention so much since the guys have been going to it since around 2011, 2010. So if you're going to be at Kineticon over the weekend, I hope to see you over there and just come up and say hi and talk about Dragon Ball. That's fine by me. This episode has been recorded in advance. That is my kind of time travel. Speaking of time travel, we as a community are actually quite flummoxed as to where Dragon Ball Super wishes to take itself in. You see, Dragon Ball Super starts around halfway in the time skip between the Buu Saga and the Peaceful World Saga, which is kind of weird. You've already skipped four years, it seems a bit wasteful. And so far, we've covered three years of the gap, age 778 to age 780. In that time, we've managed to establish the presence of Bra, Pan, the normalization of Majin Buu, whenever he's up and about, as well as actually bringing Oob into the story with some epic foreshadowing, which doesn't exactly work the other way around. Again, I did find it weird that they started this late into the time skip, but you know, fair enough. There is still a lot you can do in that time. And of course, most Dragon Ball arcs tend to last at most about a couple of weeks, in some cases just a few days. There's a lot of stuff you can do within 10 years if your arcs are just really two weeks in time. It only feels longer because we're actually seeing this being drip fed over weekly installments. What takes us years are just a few days in the Dragon World. Now that I think about it, there's a hell of a lot of peacetime in Dragon Ball. It's not all doom and gloom. But there's always been something that we've had in the back of our mind. No matter what happens in Dragon Ball Super, what we know from the end of Z is that everyone will still be alive, at least in Universe 7, and turn out okay, and be ready for a new tournament that we see right here. Pretty much everyone is present and correct for. It's a little anticlimactic, really. No matter what tension comes in our way, these guys are still going to be around, so it'll all be for naught, really. Dragon Ball Super's manga artist Toyo Taro, at a recent convention in Napoli in Italy, actually managed to sort of allude to the direction where Super is going to go and confirm pretty much what we already know. I imagine you've read until Volume 2, where Goku Black appears, so we will discover on the events that will be unleashed. Of course, the story has to end like the original, Dragon Ball Z, so at least you know that. Without a doubt, Goku, Vegeta and the others will survive. Naturally, this all can change, of course. If Super does very well and continues to do well for a very long time, in fact lately it's been going toe to toe with One Piece in terms of the ratings and in some cases surpassing it, then Toei, Shueisha, Toyotara and Toriyama will keep on making stories about Dragon Ball. It stands to reason it's a case of supply and demand. If there's a demand for something then you just keep on supplying it. Give the people what they want. So long as you can make something that is compelling and people are not going to get tired of. Back in the day though, Toriyama didn't subscribe to that notion that Toei was so cherished. He wrote the end of Z with the belief that it would truly be the end of the Dragon Ball story. That there would be no comeback from it, at least from him. Whatever would happen next would be up to the reader. So before the Boo story arc began, I said, once this next thing wraps up, I want to end it no matter what because I thought there was no way for any stronger guys to pop up, or for Goku to get any stronger than he already was. So my starting point for the Boo arc was, this is the end, so I'm going to draw whatever I want. It wasn't until immediately before the final chapter that I thought up the ending. I needed something that would signal this truly was the end, so I jumped forward 10 years. But I didn't count on the series continuing in anime form. That anime series that Toriyama was referring to is GT, and not Super by the way. The final volume of the manga came out in August 1995, and the final episode of the anime came out on January the 31st, 1996, with GT seamlessly continuing the story a week later in February. Toriyama had no clue when he was wrapping up the manga that GT was even going to happen. Luckily for Toei, as Toriyama left such a big gap, 10 years, it was the perfect opportunity for Toei to cram in more stories further down the line should they ever need to. 
They could use roughly the same designs from the Boo Saga, use the same situations that people are familiar with, and for any movie, they could still use the same moniker, Dragon Ball Z, which is hugely popular, so any respecting fan of Dragon Ball is going to see a Dragon Ball Z movie. They know what they're going to be signing up for when they buy a ticket. Oh, easy money there. It ensured that Battle of Gods and Resurrection F would get a steady profit. Now let's say that Super carries on for the longest time, and eventually, in terms of time skips and whatnot, we do end up at age 784, or close to it. They have to bring everything back to the point where the end of Z can still exist. But who's to say that they just don't do another time skip? You know, pull a Naruto Shippuden. They could keep the Dragon Ball Super nomenclature, but just stick on a subtitle right at the end of it to imply that it's a new beginning, yet it's the same show. So if we were to have this new arc in Super, what would we do with it? In my Dragon Ball Online History video, I discovered that there's a lot of things going on between Age 784 and Age 804 concerning the main roster of characters. In particular, the birth of a whole new Margin race. That's a big deal, and if you could explore that in anime form, that would be really interesting. This was all because Boo took a lover, and through the act of, um, Booby Booby, he and Miss Boo managed to father a whole new species. Links for those videos can be found in the description and up top. And for those of you thinking that that Dragon Ball Online history has no base in canon, Toriyama actually helped develop the story for the game Dragon Ball Online, so it does carry some heft to it. For example, there's the time in Age 787 when Dende, actually getting tired of how the Dragon Balls are being misused, actually deactivates them. I mean, it's understandable. Ever since Age 750, their track record's not been great, so to make sure they're not used for nefarious purposes again, or just abused by the main cast, Dende just turns them off. And since we now know that Super Dragon Balls exist, any chance to get rid of any other Dragon Ball would be a good one to take. Because after all, we saw Zamasu use the Dragon Balls to his own nefarious deeds and actually almost succeed. But this would mean a very big change. It would change the entire dynamic of the show. There would be far more peril than there was before, something that the new generation of fighters would have to take into consideration before they take out any action. Goten and Trunks, the now appointed leaders of the Z Fighters from Goku and Vegeta, would have to be careful in how they acted out any type of battle plan, and be smart against potential threats. That is a fantastic plot development. It would be an opportunity for any potential new series to distinct itself from any series that had gone before it. Also, it could be a great way to attract a new generation of fans as well. So by doing this, the whole situation really wouldn't be that alienating, because we know about Goten, Trunks, Bra and Pan. We already know them, so you don't just have to make them up. Or at least it wouldn't be as alienating as just expunging every other Z fighter that isn't Goku or Vegeta. Just keep the others around as well as the new guys now that they're older and you'll be fine. There would also be the chance to see Pan and Bra become the characters that they deserve to be. Oob could come back and actually have another crack at being a substantial character, something that GT failed to do on many occasions. There was so much potential for Oob when he and Goku ventured forth at the end of Z. This was Goku's new pupil who we know was really strong. He could have been mighty. He was the reincarnation of Kid Buu, one of Goku's strongest enemies. That could have been great. It's just a shame that Toei had no idea where to take Oob in GT. They just kind of forgotten about him after the beginning. The only thing they could really think of was just, oh, uh, merge him with Majin Buu. And yeah, that worked for a moment. But when we found out that Maju was not that much better, he kind of just disappeared again. So where would the gods be in all this post-Z malarkey? Well, I think they would actually be taking a back seat in this part of Super. The whole message that Dragon Ball Super is trying to convey is one of godly mishaps. The sacred worlds of the Kais in every single universe are riddled with problems. The god of destruction dynamic is also flawed, and when you couple that with what I just said, this will just lead to a massive cataclysm in the heavenly realms. Then when you add the fact that there are two Omni Kings in charge when, for the longest time, pretty much ever since the start of creation, there'd only been one? Ugh, you're just asking for problems. Then you've got the whole situation of Zamasu going rogue and Goasu being powerless to stop him. Then you've got Shin and his incompetence of keeping his worlds alive. Who knows what other universes could have the foibles that are similar to Shin's? It's all setting the stage for what's going to be a massive sea change in the heavens, and something that will lead to the gods taking a backseat in Super and just fading away. They won't really figure in this next part. There will be, once again, a much greater emphasis on the mortal realm. I still attest that if there were to be an end of a part 1 to Super, it would involve Beerus in some capacity. That capacity being a confrontation between Beerus and Goku slash Vegeta. 
be like a sort of bookend. We started with Beerus, and then we would end with Beerus, at least in this part of the story. The actions that Beerus took against planet Vegeta back in the days when Vegeta and Goku were children is just gonna come back to haunt him. And it will lead to him fighting against Goku and Vegeta together, because understandably, if they found out that Beerus was responsible for their planet blowing up, they would be a little bit nettled. I talk about this more in my End of Super video, which I will link to in the description again and up top. It would encapsulate the mortal realm rebelling against the gods. Something that Frieza is oh too happy to exploit back in episode 95. Part 2 would be a very different formula for sure. The mortal realm would regain its foothold on Universe 7. That is if all the universes are still intact after the Tournament of Power. Perhaps we could see Universe 7 being rebuilt with Shin getting his act together. Perhaps the Super Dragon Balls could be used to revive every single planet that was destroyed by Beerus for some erroneous reason. Or ones that were destroyed without Shin's permission. Because remember, the Super Dragon Balls can grant any wish. Maybe we can see more of Universe 6 and how they tie into our own universe, because remember, Universe 6 and Universe 7 are universal twins. Kaba, Khalifa, and Kale can come and go as they please, and this will lead to adventures in Universe 6 all the time, like it's just an everyday occurrence. There is just so much potential for Dragon Ball Super if it could just pluck up the courage and actually skip past the end of Z and make its own thing, whilst keeping the end of Z relatively intact. If Toriyama can allow Toriyotaro to just let loose and delve into his own character roster and ideas from Dragon Ball AF, then I think we can see Dragon Ball Super thrive for years to come and actually appeal to a whole new generation of fans. But don't worry, Toriyama would still be there to give his final say, it would still be his baby. So what do you guys think? Would you like to see Dragon Ball Super go past the end of Z? Are you happy with just sticking to the established timeline? Leave a comment below and let's get this discussion going. Anyway. I hope you enjoyed this video. Until the next one, be sure to like and subscribe. Catch you later.